they had this Japanese technique where they took out the poles they used for tea ceremony out of the hot kiln and they introduced some kind of combustibles like sugar, pine needles, leaves, etc. And because um, different combustibles reacted differently, the temperature changed, um, the pots looked very different. And uh, they used that for the traditional ceremony. Uh, in around 1911, um, Raku process traveled to West. Um, the British potter brought it to Britain and from there it came here around 1950s. Um, the process changed a little bit in terms of firing, the technique, what all they use, the temperature, etc. Uh, what is a Raku firing process? What are we doing? So is very low mm -hmm. compared to the other types of glaze firings that we do here. So the temperatures are anywhere from uh, 1400 to 1850 for Raku based on the Raku process we are going to do. Um, and the timing is from 20 to 30 minutes. So the pot goes in the cold oven and um, you have to wear gloves and there's a blazing fire. That's why it's called playing with fire. Mm -hmm. And then you use these long tongues to take the pot out. And then you either put it in a bucket or you put it on a flat surface and put things on it. Mm -hmm. So that's what rack firing process is. Now we can do different types of glaze for raku. Um, here in Blossom Hill, of course, for reasons, we allow only glaze that are here uh, because we want to know how the glaze react. Any clay uh, with a grog works really well for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I will be walking through the clays here. B mix works. A lot of people do raku with porcelain pots, but they tend to crack a lot more mm -hmm. comparatively because there's pretty much no grog in porcelain. B mix, the same thing. B mix with grog, we have Orion Stout. You can also use Bravo Buck, even though it's uh, kind of tinted clay, it's not white clay, for certain types of rack. Mm -hmm. And that has grog and sculpture rack. So these are the, what is grog? Does anybody know what a grog is? So basically it's clay, they fire it, they powder it, so it's already vitrified clay. Mm -hmm. It comes in different sizes, some of them are really fine grog. We used to have a clay called Godzilla. Grog. Grogzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Back here. And that really had big grog in it. So if you're throwing the clay, you could feel it. Yeah. Versus if you have thrown with B mixed with sand, uh, B mixed with grog, you don't feel it as much on your hand as opposed to Orion Stout or Sculpture Raccoon because the grog size in the clay is very different. Um, so why does, why does the grog help? because the temperatures vary so fast. Mm -hmm. So it needs to cool down before you open it. Mm -hmm. uh, versus for Raku, you just take it out from the hot oven. And sometimes you plunge it in water, sometimes you put it in a bucket, sometimes even when you take it out and put it outside, the temperature of air is way cooler than the one in the oven. So mm -hmm. there is a thermal shift. Plus you're using tongs, there's some kind of pressure in different parts of the uh, clay body. So um, it is very, very important when you're throwing to try and have same size of throw. You don't want thicker clay on one side and thinner clay on the other. Mm -hmm. There's more chance of cracking and grog helps a lot um, with pipe grease. And then shapes and textures. So uh, for Raku generally, if there are hard edges for anything, mm -hmm. um, the clay tends to crack there. People like to use curved or arc shapes, like these kind of shapes do really well on that. Mm. Or even these, a mm. little bit. Or if you're doing a vase, then you can do something like this. Now the only problem with these kind of vases is you have to remember you're gonna pick it up with the top. Mm. So it needs to have a little bit of lip. So when you're picking up, it stops here, or you pick it up from here and it doesn't move, so you have to figure out what you're comfortable picking up. Generally, anything with a little bit bigger opening works better because then you can put your tongs inside, open the tongue, and then you pick it up like that and put it in the bucket. So any of these kind of uh, shapes work. For these kind of shapes, it's better to have a 
bigger lip if you're doing it for the first time. So put your tongs here, there's a lip, it stays on the tongue and then you transfer it. Um, and also the, um, also how big it is. For me, I'm a short person. I always have problem picking up big pieces because if I'm gonna put, say, if I have this, this top, and the raku kiln starts here, and the temperatures of the raku kiln are best in the middle of the oven, so we put the bricks to make the temp like make it higher. So for me, if I have to go up there and pick it up, so generally these kind of pots I don't go super high <laughs> when I leave them open because I want to be able to pick them up. Also weight. Remember, you have gloves, you have tongs, you're gonna pick it up, and there's gonna be fire. So um, if you have a 10 pound pot, uh, you may not be able to pick it up with the tongs and move it somewhere. So when you're throwing for Raku, you have to remember, yes, texture, um, how we do it, and then size and shape of the pot is extremely important. Mm -hmm. I have done this, I've done in two pieces. So that works too, and then you do epoxy, mm -hmm. so you have a pedestal. Now, plates and bowls, I have done it many times. Um, the, the chances of cracking is more than something like this. Because uh, when you take out plate, you put it on a surface. We put it on a hot plate, but still. Uh, it's suddenly a lot of uh, surface is exposed uh, to hot air, and the cracking can be more. So if you want to experiment, more than welcome to do bowls and plates that you can pick up with the tongue yourself, think about that. Uh, but generally these kind of shapes survive better. So um, if you're practicing, you don't care too much. If you're throwing three pieces, for example, for Raku, make two something similar to this and one pot, maybe a platter or a bowl, so you don't care. So, um, yeah, they do look super cool. Like when they're, they actually come out fine, they do look cool. But remember those things um, in your mind. And then next is techniques. There are multiple different techniques that we do for raku fire. Um, the very popular one is the glaze. So any this fire piece. Generally, um, I will be talking about a uh, little bit about trimming and what how you do it, but generally, um, it comes out of this, and we have three or four glazes, raku glazes outside, and once the demonstration is done, I'll walk you guys out and show you what uh, different types of pots there are, and you put those glaze on, about two coats, you paint them on, and those go in the kiln, then they get picked up out of the hot oven at around 1850, go in the bucket. The bucket has paper or sometimes, uh, we don't do pine needles here because they don't take very long. Um, they keep kindling very long, so it's a sort of a fire hazard. So we do sawdust and paper shreddings here. And uh, when you put that in the bucket, the fire goes everywhere and that is the result you get from it. So this is called the SMAP Sudo favorite. It's rainbow matte raku. Um, and uh, I just love how it looks. Mm -hmm. um, we also offer um, mica raku. So mica is basically uh, some type of mineral. It's like a crushed pigment um, that you mix with terracage. And when the pot comes out of this, before rakuing it, you put that thing on. Mm -hmm. And um, these are some, these are two or three of the mica pieces. So you put the mica on with terracage, and then you put the combustible. So all these dots you see here, they are from sugar. And we put feathers, the sugar, um, we do horse hair. You can do human hair, but they are so much thinner that they burn super fast, and sometimes you don't get anything on the top. So horse hair are much thicker. You take long horse hair, just drape it on and then you get, or you can hold it like super taut against the pot, which is what I've done here. Mm -hmm. And then you go get these. So for mica raku, one great thing is you can have a lot of colors for mica raku. Uh, on this pot, I have purple inside, violet outside. This one is 
red. This one is red also. So uh, you can get gold, you can get blue, green. There are tons of colors that you can do for mica. So if you look at this spot versus this spot, now all of them are fairly smooth. For Raku, generally, if there is too much texture, the pot doesn't look good. For glazed Raku, it works because then for certain texture, you can put one kind of glaze. For certain other texture, you can put, put different kind of glaze and it works. But for Mica Raku, Sagar Raku, I'll be explaining the bar. For all those, it's very, very important for the pot to be super smooth. Um, if you look at this pot versus this pot, do you see the difference? There's a slight shine here, and if you feel those spots, um, they feel different. And this spot too, actually. If you look at this and look at this, it's different. It's the same clay, but there's something called terra sedge on it. Now, what is a terra sedge? Um, terra sedge is basically a fine slip. You make it with a uh, ball clay, regular ball clay, but you mix it with water and some kind of deep flocculent. So deep flocculent uh, makes the thin particles. So clay is made of particles. Clay particles are not balls, they are flat disks. Um, these flat disks, there are some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. So in terra say when you add the deep flocculent, the thicker particles go down and the thinner particles stay suspended in water. Now those particles are called terra say. So you, once the pot is trimmed, um, and uh, you make it smooth, then you put terra sedge. And then there's a process called burnishing where you use different kind of ribs to smooth it over and give it that kind of a shine. So once the pot has that kind of a shine, it is really, really ready for something called mica or ubara. If you do a regular pot, it won't look as shiny as this is. Um, for so today, show me show me a video of somebody putting cotton candy on these kind of pots. It's really <laughs> nice actually because it's wispy and it gives different kind of texture on your pot. So um, that would be cool to try. Um, there's another.